Great. How's everybody doing tonight? Good? Good. All right. Well, my name is Bogdan. It's great to see everybody here. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm one of the contributors for HackGreenmill.com and as well as a committee member for HackGreenmill. And I write a lot of uh, PHP code and Laravel code. Um, so if you're interested to talk to me about that, feel free uh, to come to me and talk to me. Um, since you're in this room, I guess you guys are excited about data transfer objects and PHP. I don't know. Do you guys use PHP? Anybody a PHP person? Yeah, all right. Cool. Awesome. Well, I want to shine a little bit of light into what data transfer objects are and why you should use them and how you can use them in your application, how you can actually implement them. Um, this talk was originally uh, uh, specifically about PHP, but realistically, these concepts, you know, go into other programming languages, whatever it is you're using, whether it's JavaScript, C++, so on and so forth. So this talk is a little bit technical. Uh, for anybody who's not technical, I'll try to be um, pretty uh, straightforward with everything, but you know, we're going to look at a little bit of something. So a few months ago, we at Hack for Greenville implemented a new event importer, and this event importer is basically uh, calling a meetup API and an Eventbrite API and we're just getting some data from them about the events that are going on. And, you know, we display these events, these events on our events page, as well as we post them in our, in our Slack channel. And what we do is we get these events, and then um, you know we uh, we 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 take a look at the I'm sorry. What we do is uh, we look at the API data. We know that like Eventbrite and Meetup.com have different you know, data structures. So rather than like dealing with two data structures within our application, uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, combine them into a data transfer object where we can feed both of these um, uh, data structures into something that we can work with within our application and kind of pass it around our code base. And uh, this is basically the data transfer object that we're going to talk about today. Um, so just a quick overview of what we're kind of doing. I know this is like a very basic uh, workflow, but you know, we're going to take some data, whether it's from the cloud, it could be from our database, it could be from another source. We're going to feed it into our data transfer object. It's a real class, and you're going to see it in a minute. And then we're going to pass it around our code. And you know this could be to a function, to a constructor, to some job, uh, wherever it may be. Um, so that's pretty much the, uh, the gist of it. So you may be thinking to yourself, like, hey, Bob, like, we pass data all the time. And yes, it's true. And a lot of us, uh, especially in the PHP world, are very familiar with these associated arrays. And you know, they're pretty handy. You can like whip them up pretty quick. And you know, uh, there are some downsides to them. We'll talk about it in a minute. But basically, you could have a handle method, uh, for example, which takes this array. And then you can then do, I don't know, whatever it is you need it to do. In this case, we need to insert some data into our database uh, from that data. And uh, you know, like I mentioned, they're easy to set up. You know, associated arrays are like readily available in PHP. Uh, but there are some um, downsides. Uh, they don't have any type check. So, for example, if you're expecting, um, you know, to to pass a boolean into some sort of um, key. Uh, but this associated array doesn't have any type safety, so it'll just take it, and then your boss will call you one day and says, like, hey, why is there a one instead of something else, and, and you're going to try to uh, search for that. So it, the associated arrays also don't have really good IDE intelligence. Um, you may be able to get some, like, auto-completion on the actual key name, but it doesn't know the value of the, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't know what the data type of the value is in that array. Uh, so that's unfortunately a downside. And it's also very hard to refactor. Like if you think about it, like if you ever wanted to go and change an array key from event name to um, name perhaps, you would have to basically go find and replace it in your code base to be able to do this. And you know this is an opportunity for you to introduce bugs. So instead, um, uh, so instead uh, this is like a basic data transfer object. And it may look like programming 101 to all of us, and it really is. And, and the idea behind it is that the simplicity is the key. You want a lightweight class um, that represents your data, your structured data, 
making sure that the pipe safety is properly uh, cast. So we have uh, uh, a main property with a cast of string, and then we have like a start set and an end set with a cast of a date time object. So that means by the time when you put data into this uh, data transfer object, um, it, it requires you that it is of this type. So that way when we use it later in our code base, we know for a fact that it's a string and a date time um, uh, object. So that's pretty much um, the gist of it. The other part of it is that it is normalized data. Right? So for example, Eventbrite gives us uh, a Unix timestamp uh, as their like, uh, format of the time that they represent. And we don't want to deal with a Unix timestamp. We want to convert that into a daytime object that we can easily do like date math on and you know, maybe change the formatting of it uh, later on. So that's really what we're looking for. We're looking to take some data from an API, media database, you know, massage it a little bit, insert it into this object, and then we can take this object and kind of pass it around. So, um, Here's how you would go about hydrating and using a DTO. And this is, again, programming one-on-one, -on -one, pretty simple stuff. I think a lot of people will understand what's going on here. All we're doing is newing up this class, and then we're setting the properties with the data that we got from our API. Uh, and, and for the starts and ends of that date, we then parse the Unix timestamp or whatever that date format is, and then we also set it on the object. And then all we would have to do is update our handle function. So previously we were accepting an array, but now we're just accepting a event data. And rather than like dealing with the um, the data structure of the event of the associated array, we're dealing with the data, the, the properties that are on the uh, data transfer object. So it, there's a lot of benefits here, which I'm going to talk to uh, in just a second. So. Why use a DTO? I think like one of the biggest things, especially in PHP nowadays, if you've been on the latest versions, is that PHP has like pretty good type safety. Um, so you can say like, hey, this needs to be a string, this needs to be a boolean, and you know, you get that basically that validation for free. So if for some reason um, your code is passing a boolean into a string, um, you would have a, a fatal error in your application. Um, the other part of it is like we saw on the other slide, you have structured data. You have data that is relevant for your application. You know, the event rate API sends us a bunch of information about an event. And all we're really interested in is the name, when it starts, when it ends, perhaps the location, and so on and so forth. Um, so we have like a really good set of data that we're really interested for our application. Uh, the other part of it is we have IDR auto completion. Because it's a full, you know, full on class, full on object, the IDE understands, um, you know, uh, all the usages of the property, um, you know, where, uh, you know, what the data of the property is, and um, uh, so on and so forth. Then you can do auto completion, so there's uh, less likelihood for a type. Uh, the other part of using a class is you can encapsulate methods, right? So, for example, like if you ever wanted to find out is this event going on right now, you can simply add a class to your data transfer object that checks when the start, you know, if the event is happening right now by comparing the start and end that date to uh, the current time. And uh, this also allows for easy refactoring, like I said, because these are um, properties that are well understood by the ID. And likely, uh, likewise with the testing, you know, you can just new up a class and you know exactly what the properties you need to put on that class because they are well defined. So where would you use a DTO, right? And we talked about this uh, event importer, and you know this is just a basic uh, flow chart. We have an event break API and a meetup API. We take that and put it into this class, and then later on in our code base, uh, we just in insert it into a database which houses this information. So that's a pretty straightforward uh, example. Uh, another example would be, for example, if you wanted to create an uh, API response, and you probably do this already in your code base, in one way or another. Um, say you have a user stable and address stable and you need to uh, respond you know, with an API. So all you would do is create, say, a user demographic response and you would have three properties on there. First name, last name, maybe a city. And you would just respond with that data transfer object. And uh, the nice thing about it, again, because everything's um, 
inside this object, you can follow through where it's being used and so on and so forth. You can easily refactor if you need. Um, another good example would be, uh, say you have a, a charges table and a refunds table in the database. And um, you know, in your current web app, you have two pages. Right? You have one page that's list listing the charges and another page that's listing the refunds. And the boss comes back to you and he's like, listen, this is all cool, but we want it to be in one page. So what you could do is you could make a, a, either a union call in your database or you can make two database calls for charges and refunds. And then you would put that data through a data transfer object as a single um, data representation of both of those things, the charges and the refunds. And then you can list them all in one page. So that's a really um, a great way to, to do some data presentation. And this is actually one of my favorite ways to use data transfer objects. How many of us put JSON data in the database column? Yes. When you put data in there, it's great. When you take it out, especially from the developer experience in your ID, you don't know the shape of it. But if instead, at the time that we pulled the data out of the database, if we hydrated that data, that column, through a data transfer object, well then we can work with a real class all over our code base. And that is like one of the Nice things, I cannot tell you how many data transfer objects I have at my full-time job where we deal with very complex JSON structures and this this is like a very well uh, proven method, at least for us, and you should definitely try that. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, packages. So I use Laravel in my full-time job. I don't know if you guys use other PHP or other programming languages and frameworks. There's a package out there by a company called Spotty that makes a lot of open source packages. It's called Laravel Data. And one of the things I want to highlight, they offer validation out of the box. And uh, if you take a look at this example here, <clears throat> we have an event data object, and we have a property called UUID. And if you think about it, you know, we can pass a string. It's a, it's a type property of a string. And we can pass like hello world into this property and PHP will not fail. It will just be like, yeah, totally fine. But because we have this package and we have some validation, you know, we can um, add an attribute called UUID. And there's a, a, a number of different validations and you can even define your own validation rules. But what this will do is, as we're putting data into this object, we're gonna validate that the format of the UUID matches what a UUID should look like. And if it doesn't, it's gonna blow up when you try to hydrate this object. So this kind of ensures that once we hydrate this object with some data, we know for sure it's a new idea. It's not just a string. And uh, you can also do this for various uh, object types, um, not just like basic strings and integers. And you can also have nested data objects within itself. So if you use Laravel, and if you don't, you should check it out. Definitely take a look at this. And uh, so that brings me to the, you know, my conclusion. I feel like using full-on classes as your data transfer objects has a lot of benefit, especially for the developer experience. Uh, thank you guys, and check out the GitHub page for Hype Greenbook.